Good morning. Good morning. I'm Mother Stacy, and it is a great joy for me to welcome everyone here on behalf of this congregation. That is, of course, welcome everybody, both who are here in person and those who are joining us online this morning. I extend that welcome, as I said, on behalf of this congregation, the Church of the Ascension, on behalf of the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania, of whom we are one of many mission outposts throughout our region, but most importantly, of course, on behalf of Jesus Christ, because we gather together whenever we gather in his name to celebrate all the incredible things he's doing in our midst and in our world and in us and with us and through us. I know many of you are joining us perhaps uh, on this special occasion, we are having a baptism. The newest member of the church is joining us, uh, Sophia Marasco. So if you are joining us for the first time for that happy event, or maybe for the first time in some time, or for the 101st time, we all need to be reminded that this is truly our Father's house. And each and every one of us belongs here, and has a place here, and is missed when we're not here. This morning, our service, as I said, is a service of Holy Eucharist. It includes baptism. And our service is from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. We have service bulletins that will walk us each through the entire service. So I invite you to uh, follow along and to join us at home or here, uh, physically as well as spiritually, by kneeling, standing, etc., as you are able to do and as you feel so moved. Our service, as I said, is a service of holy baptism with communion. So if you will please stand as you are able, we'll begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit there is one hope in God's call to us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter stood among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must be a witness, become a witness to us in his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place. And they cast lots for them, and then the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, God. We will read responsibly full verses from Psalm 1, which is from the Book of Common Prayer on page 585 and in your service bulletin. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They delighted in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. 
They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first book of St. John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in the Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you have gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. And you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's gospel, I'm going to kind of give you my analogy how this would read to me in in the 21st century. So as we look at this setting, it'd be like a huge company. And you're walking down the hall past the CEO's office and you pick up this discussion and you hear the the CEO 
who is the son of the owner, talking to his father. And he is telling his father, Father, it's time for me to come back to the main office. It's time for me to come back to the corporation's headquarters. I have taught these people everything I know, everything that you have taught me, I have taught them. It is time for them to be on their own. And I believe, Father, with your help, continuous help, they will do a great job. Well, today, brothers and sisters, we're going to hire a new employee, and her name is Sophie. Sophia, I'm sorry. Sophia is the newest member of this corporation, and Sophia does not know where to begin. You see, that is your and I and Sophia's parents' job. We are to teach Sophia the company policy. And what is the company policy? The company policy is right here in this booklet. It's called the Baptismal Covenant. And it is you and I who not only have to teach her that, who have to show her that and make sure she does not stray from it. So we all know that company policy is the law. And the company policy is to be followed very strictly. You see, most people think this company policy or they think this baptismal covenant it's like buying fire insurance. It is not. Just because we are hired into this company, even though we have been baptized and accepted in this company, it takes more than that. We know that from the earlier reading today because the one destined, Judas, left the company do we know not that Judas was saved? We, we will not know that. In my own opinion, I believe he was. But he strayed. And we don't need to have anyone take a chance on that. So it is up to you and I to teach Sophia the company policy by our word, by our example. This is how companies grow with Sophia's. This is what the company policy states to us. There is some very strict rules and very strict company policy in here, if, and we will be going over that company policy. Brothers and sisters, it's serious stuff. We, as churches, know there are so many who come into the church who are baptized and we see no more. We, brothers and sisters, it's our watch. It's our opportunity and our, actually, mission and job. We took the oath. Actually, it says right here that we will raise her up. You say, I do. I will show her the way. This is a verbal contract. Yes, it is. But you know, in a court of law, verbal contracts are held up. They are not to be taken lightly. The very first lesson I ever learned in business or business was this. If you went up to a house and you knocked on the door and said, I'll shovel your walk for $5, and the guy says, the family says, yes, shovel it, and you shovel it, and they don't pay, you can sue them. You are held liable for making that offer of money. He is entitled 
to that $5, even though that wasn't written on paper. So you see, this, this is why we, as a body of Christ, have to stay together. We have to raise up. This is why I believe in today's society, we are not living into that covenant because our churches are not that full. And I know pandemics here, and I know that that's had a great cause lately, but not over the centuries. Because we do not take our contracts seriously. What is amazing to me is though, how much that the founder of this company called the church, called God, has invested in you and I. And how much he loves us. He sent his son who has all the knowledge and has taught us how to live and how to treat one another and how to live into this covenant that we will be taking. And we had love. He gave his own son to his own son to the fact that his own son was sacrificed. And we know what is at the end of this contract. We know what it happens. Every one of us, every one of us want to go to the home company. We all want to go to the founders, go to the main plant. And what's there? There's everything that you ever wanted there. There's peace. There's joy. There's wholeness. But most important, there's love. Love that none of us, none of us can imagine. None of us can feel it. What love we show here in the world will not even touch what will be shown in heaven. That is the final destination. That is our final resting place. That is what we strive for. That's why Jesus, the CEO, says, I have given them everything. I have taught them everything. They know what it is. And he also tells us, Father, he tells his employees, he's told us, I will leave you an advocate. Jesus has told them, and that's next week's exciting news. The Holy Spirit will always be with us, will always be there for us, leading and guiding. But like anything else, when things get with, we need to engage it. We need to ask. And the founding father will give us what we ask. The problem with today is we are living in, and we try to live in what the world looks at us, when what we think the world looks like, and we try to live in and do all the wants. When all the wants and all what we'll ever need is at the home office. It's kind of a simple analogy, but it's the truth. We strive to go home. We strive to go to the home office. And we can't live by the world's standards. We have to live by the godly standards. And we have to show Sophia what them standards look like through our personal lives. We are here for one reason, 
and one reason only. And our job description right now is to bear good fruit. It's to make this the best company ever. It is always got to be the most joyful thing in the world. I think the baptisms should be the biggest celebration in the church. Because we have a new employee. We have a new member. That's joyful. That's something to celebrate. I wish there was baptisms every Sunday in the church. Because that will be the fact that we are living into the company policy. People will know us by the fruit that we produce. Sophia, Leo here, they're good fruit. It is they who will produce the future fruit. The future employees and it is us to instruct as Jesus has instructed us to do the good work, to go and proclaim the good news. It is our opportunity today to begin showing Sophia what this good news is all about and to make sure that there will always be good fruit. Amen. Now, if I can invite uh, Eric and Susie, godparents, and of course the baby, <laughs> just right up here. Presentation. You know. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, both, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness? that rebel against God. I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. If the congregation would please stand. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who has received the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O oh Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and, of, and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. You might take this with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And at your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we were reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that she who here is cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
Sophia Kate, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sophia, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Hey now. I got it. Who knew there was a height requirement, huh? I'll give it to mom. Receive the light of Christ. May your light so shine before others that they may see the good work you do and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. the newly baptized, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And now it is perfectly fine to clap, as long as we don't wake the baby up. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please be seated. We have just a few announcements this morning. Uh, it is a great joy for us to celebrate this baptism together and have sweet little Sophia, who we've prayed for uh, before she even got here, here and among us and healthy. Of course, uh, we do have some events coming up. First, immediately following this service, we will have our monthly vestry meeting. That'll be in the parish hall. Uh, folks are invited, as always, to attend that if they wish. If you have any questions or issues you'd like to have brought up with the vestry, you could ask a member and they can bring that forward. Uh, Stacy is here. Addie is here, and Roger is here, so you could talk to them if you'd like. Also, uh, Sophia's parents brought goodies. Since we can't have normal kind of coffee hour, we can still have goodies. So there are cupcakes that you know safely individually packaged to be served. As you go out, swing by the entrance to the parish hall and pick that up in celebration of Sophia's baptism as well. Our March uh, distribution, sorry, our May distribution of Second Harvest Mobile Food Pantry is this Wednesday. That happens at two o'clock, the distribution. If you are able to help with that, if you come around one o'clock to help us unload and get everything ready, we usually serve from two to three. Folks can pick up their food stuff. Um, so that's this Wednesday, two o'clock distribution. If you're able to help, call the church office and let um, 
Barb know, if you would like to receive food or you know someone who could use the food, we still have slots available. So call the church office and just let us know and we'll get those folks on the list. Also, of course, on Wednesday evening at 8, 8 p.m., we have our AA meeting. And on Thursday, we serve free lunch to go from 11 to 12.30. So if you're out and about, you can stop by and pick up a meal. Finally, our friends over at Destination are still doing their um, 2020 giving campaign. Uh, we are, for the month of May, collecting hygiene items for their assistance pantry. Those are items that are, are especially in demand by folks. So next time you're out shopping, if you are able to pick up extra, um, sorry, to pick up extra bar soap or shampoo, toothpaste, dish soap, laundry detergent, toilet paper, anything like that, they would greatly appreciate it. You can drop it in the collection box in the guild room right outside the church office. I think that's all of our announcements. So let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself an offering for us all. Please stand as you are able <clears throat> for the celebration of communion. Our service continues with Holy Eucharist, Eucharistic Prayer C, that's found on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer or in our leaflets. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal element you brought forth the human race, and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman to fulfill your law, 
to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, gave it, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we, we celebrate, celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our service concludes now with our post-communion prayer found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer or in our service leaflet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I say each week, it has been a joy for us to be together, whether it was here in person or virtually. And during this time, even as we are beginning to get more and more back to the way things were. Let us not do weary in doing good. Remember to continue to say our prayers, wash our hands, wear our mask when necessary, and know how very, very precious and loved you are. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.